Hey, my name is Mike Panisi and I work at Boku. I train people about how to test front-end applications. In this screencast, I'm going to talk a bit about getting a server ready for stress testing. Before we get started, I just wanted to point out this article on Boku.com. This is um, the basis for this screencast and it goes into much more detail than we'll be going into today. It has a bunch of references uh, so you can do some further reading and, and really get uh, more detail that you'll need to um, do this yourself. Having said that, uh, I hope this will be useful just to kind of get an overview and see what this whole process feels like. What we'll be doing today is looking at um, first a production server that I've set up just to kind of um, simulate what uh, your production server might look like. Uh, then we'll be creating an AMI which is an Amazon machine image uh, from which we can spawn as many stress testing simulators as we want. And finally we'll actually run a basic stress test. So first um, we'll look at our uh, fake kind of production server. So this is the AWS interface, the Amazon Web Service interface. Um, and we're looking at a list of our EC2 instances running right now. You can see that I have one running already. It's called the, my production server. So uh, as it turns out, I'm just happened to be running my production server as an EC2 instance as well. So uh, as I point out in this post, your EC2 instance, I mean, your web server might be running anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Um, it just happens to be, in this case, running from EC2. So here I have um, two connections to my uh, web server. <coughs> and one that we'll be using later, which is called the B control. And so that's how we'll be actually be administering the stress test. But for now, we'll stick with the server. <coughs> so uh, the first thing you'll want to do with your server is make sure that you have um, a really high limit on the number of open file descriptors uh, you can have. And so this seems a little bit surprising because we're not really working with that many files necessarily. What we're interested with is um, connections. It, so, as it turns out, uh, is if you're if you're running Linux, then the way that it's operating under the hood is for every TCB connection, be it a WebSocket or a long polling XHR, um, it's going to have a file descriptor open uh, in the operating system. So, if you have the default limit of 1,024 files files that can be open then that's the maximum number of connections that you can sustain. So it's going to be important to raise that to something that's above what you need. So the way we'll do that here is we'll edit this file in Etsy. Let's see, it's in security. So I'll go to the end. And I've been here before. So I've already set this up to be for any user. We're setting the hard limit on the number of files to be 40,960. So that's well above what we will need today. Uh, okay. And so last step is to actually set that. 40,060. Oops. There it is. So now we can kind of check it. Good. All right. With that out of the way, um, I wanted to take one minute to look at the different ways we can monitor uh, our the load on the server as we're running the stress test. So traditionally people can use uh, top, which is this utility to look at system resources. Uh, kind of in real time you can see the screens updating with information about all the running processes, uh, CPU information, memory information. And this is this is pretty good. Uh, if you wanted to get a little bit fancier you could also uh, download and install HTOP. And you can see here that we have color, um, we have kind of more graphical ways of looking at CPU usage and this thing also responds to mouse clicks so it's a little bit easier to use uh, interface wise but for our purposes I really like SAR which is a way to look at um, real-time information about your system so what we'll do is by default we'll just say SAR and dash one and so this is just gonna make uh, SAR print out information by default it's printing out CPU usage once every second. So we could do SAR2 and that would be once every two seconds. But um, the important thing is that you can actually change the what the information that you're looking at. So we can look at uh, information on sockets for instance. And so now we're looking at uh, total number of sockets, TCP sockets, UDP sockets, all this stuff. And today we're, we're interested in TCP sockets specifically. So um, 
what we'll do is we'll also give it an output option. We'll write it to uh, results.sar, for instance. And so now the nothing's really changed here. Uh, we're still seeing the information, but when we finish running, we can look and see that there's a results.sar file. We can cat that out if we want to, but it's not really useful. Um, it's binary data. So instead, what we'll do is we'll use SAR itself to look at this. So we'll use SAR um, and SOC and use the F flag and give it results.sar. And so now we're seeing kind of a, just a playback of the information we just recorded. So um, what's nice about this, though, is that SAR is actually recorded despite just looking at uh, information on uh, sockets, SAR has recorded all the information that it collected over the course of that test. So if we didn't pass this, this flag, we would be looking at the CPU utilization uh, during that time. And so we could use the same interface that we did when we were monitoring system activity to go back and look through uh, the logs of all the system resources. And so this will give us a lot of flexibility when we're coming back and and analyzing what happened during our stress test, we can dig down into different details like uh, memory utilization, network utilization, CPU utilization, and uh, all these different flags are going to be in the manual page for SAR, and you can go through and see what those look like um, and what kind of information you can kind of drill down into. So that's really great to have this as kind of a resource when you're done, uh, this results file that has uh, comprehensive stats on your system over the course of the stress test.